Lunch Bites edition, 15 minute technology webinar series. Today we're going to be talking about our batch process production entry module, um, which is part of our E2B Anytime 500 suite for use with Sage 500. Um, the product itself is designed to help companies um, with rapid labor entry and material issues for entry against work orders. My name is James Mallory, Director of Marketing, and we're going to start the presentation. So just a quick summary of why we developed this, this module. Um, it is similar to those using the production entry screen in Sage 500. The big difference is that instead of creating a work order on the fly, what we're doing is we're doing multiple labor or material entries against an open work order so we do have work in process. Some of the problems that this module solves, it allows you to enter multiple materials or material issues at one time. So in many environments um, you have to lot serial or bin track items which means you cannot back flush them because they don't know the system does not know which lot or serial number to back flush. With batch process production entry, we can have all the default values brought in to our entry grid. You know, there could be you know, 100 different materials that are part of that, that um, entry that we're doing. And then you get to do the distribution on those to pick the lot and serial numbers. Um, much, much faster than doing one material entry at a time. Um, you can do this all on a single screen. Again, lot serial tracked items, default bin information, um, multiple labor entries on one screen. So instead of going and doing a labor entry, then another labor entry, then another labor entry, you can do them all on one screen and post them all at the same time. Um, and you can have default values. So, for example, if I have a routing that requires 100 widgets every time I produce something, and I've issued 20 of those to date, through this module or some other means, I can have the screen default the standard 100 minus the 20 to a value of 80. So I can actually use this to kind of determine what do I need to produce or issue, I should say. So this is the Sage 500 production entry screen. And a lot of us um, on the call today have used this module. It's kind of an after the fact production entry where I simply come in and I pick a routing that I'm going to produce parts to. I enter the quantity and then I click the validate production button. Validate production then fills out the production detail information on the materials and the labor steps required. And then when I actually post this or proceed, what happens is it's going to do, um, first of all, it's going to create the work order then it's going to do all these steps, right? It's going to do a material requisition or issue for that MUR03. It's then going to do an issue for the MUR02, the MUR01, and then it's going to do the labor, basically back flushed at standard from the router. Um, close the work order, close WIP, all in one step. Now, this is a great screen. It really streamlines the production process, but there's no way to really have work in process, right? And, you know, a lot of companies want to be able to do that. So this is our batch process production entry screen. As you can see, the, the header information is very similar to what we just looked at with production entry. The difference being we're not picking a routing, we're picking a work order right here. Okay? Um, we enter our employee information, that can then default down to the bottom of the screen here. We put the finished good that we're producing, that actually will default from the work order, as well as the routing information. And then you, you click this uh, enter transaction button, which is grayed out since I had already clicked it. It's going to then put the transaction quantities down here at standard which I can then override. Okay, So even though it's telling me that I need um, 5 of the MUR03, 5 of the MUR02, and 1 unit of the MUR01, I can still change those values before I register and post those transactions. 
Okay. Customer profile for this module, uh, discrete manufacturing, mixed mode, repetitive, lean, batch process. From a, a Mass 500 or Stage 500 system profile, if you're doing lot traceability extensively, serialized components and serialized finished goods, uh, tracking quantities by the bin location, and you're using or want to be able to be using the advanced manufacturing system uh, within Stage 500 for work orders and work in process, then this is a fit for you. Um, typical industries, we see this requirement. Electronics and electrical, um, where obviously you have a lot of serialization, food and beverage, nutraceutical, pharmaceutical, you get a lot of um, a lot of tracking, and you obviously can't back flush there. Automotive and capital equipment, you get a lot of repetitive or cellular manufacturing where you want to do multiple issues at one time. Um, industrial fabrication, plastics, rubber, it really is very common across multiple industries. But these are some that we see time and time again where this module has a lot of value. Um, this is the options screen. So before we go enter information on that main screen, there are options here. So we can actually customize which fields we're going to display on the settings. So for example, if I'm only doing material issues, then I probably want to hide the labor-related um, fields on the, on the entry grid. Okay. Um, if I'm only doing labor entries, right, I can have a setting just for labor entry. And then I've got some options over here on the left. Do I want to print a report? Where do I want to print that? Do I want to confirm before posting? Um, what steps do I want to include in this particular setting that I can then go back and use over and over again? Do I want to look at material, outside, other, or labor? Under the miscellaneous, do I want to show back flush steps? Do I want to default that transaction quantity, what's required for the routing, minus what's been um, transacted to date? If I have been tracked items, do I want to default the, um, you know, which bin do I want to use as the default, the preference one, two, or three? Uh, do I want to default the employee information from the header down to the detail? Because again, I'm doing multiple labor or material entries. so. You know, I can have that employee defaulted as the employee each of those transactions. If I have comments that I'm entering on the header, I can have those comments then copy down to those individual transactions. And do I want to show completed steps? Um, but last but not least here, do I want to mark that step as complete after I post the series of material issues or labor entries? And then when I'm done um, with the labor entries, I'm going to get a report, right, a transaction register, that's going to give me the information about that transaction. This is something that's nice you don't get with um, you know, a normal labor entry in Sage 500. So a real high level overview of a batch process production entry. Companies that see this module recognize immediately the value that it has. Um, it is part of our manufacturing suite as well as our supply chain suite. So lots of, of pieces to uh, really make your daily lives a lot more effective, a lot more efficient, and really streamline this process. And you think about it, if you've got you know, 100 items or even 20 items that are part of a recipe for a vitamin, a nutraceutical product, um, for medicine, for food and beverage. Every one of those is lot tracked. Do you really want to go in and do a, a material issue for each of those? Or do you want to go to one screen, have the quantities defaulted, do your distributions, and simply click the, the process transaction button and do all those on one screen? It's going to make you, your life a lot better. So that's it. Um, we're going to wrap up with some questions. While we wait for the questions to come in, I've got my information up on the screen. Um, I do also want to recommend if you go to anytimecollect.com, that's another product line that we represent, a lot of companies um, like that. If you go to e2beanytime.com or e2betech.com, you'll be able to drill down from there to find our um, e2beanytime website and product suite where we have a number of videos and additional resources for you. Um, at this time, I'm not seeing any questions, 
So we're going to conclude Lunch Bites for today. I'd like to thank you for taking time out, and we will talk to you all very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.